cubics are hard. Quartics are even harder. Quintics are impossible, okay? So I'm deliberately choosing a cubic because if you looked at part A, like you don't need any fancy stuff here to factorize that. That's a quadratic, you can deal with that, okay? But part C, gross, right? This is the polynomial they give you, okay? And they want to show, they actually give you for free, we actually know what one of the factors is. Can you show me, can you prove me, prove to me using the factor theorem that that is indeed a factor? Okay, so for 2c, um, if we call this p of x, okay, what's the number that I want to test out? p of what to show that x minus 1 is a factor? What's the number I'm going to pair with that? If I'm, I've got x minus a, they want me to go x minus 1. Well, that means a is 1, right? So I'm going to test p of 1. Okay? I'm just going to give this crack. It's not, it's not hard. Look, this is going to be 1 cubed, which is 1, plus 3 lots of 1 squared, which is also 1. Take away 1, take away 3. Look at my numbers. They all just match up, right? This 1 and this take away 1, this 3 and this negative 3, nailed it. Okay, that's all you needed to show. Now I know that x minus 1 is a factor. Now, just for the sake of it, even though it's not in the question, usually where this would go is, okay, now... I want you to factorise this thing. I want you to actually factorise it further. So what I want you to do is just, actually now that we know this is a factorisation, I'd like you to go ahead and do this. Um, you can either choose to do it this way, or you can choose to do it this way. I want you to go ahead, do the division, and then off the basis of what we just found, give me the actual factorisation, just like I have here. Okay, go ahead and give that a go. So I have it down to You've got it? Excellent. Well done. You no, ahead of I have it down to two. You have it what? Down. Oh, okay, yeah, go ahead. That's okay, I'm gonna see. Oh. About what? What part of it? So uh, if if there was a negative one. Yes. You, you put a positive 1 with the P of 1, right? Yep. So if it is a positive 1, we put a negative 1? Absolutely, which is exactly what we did here. See that? So when I was dividing by x plus 1, to find the remainder, I put in negative 1. Because x plus 1 is really x take away negative 1. Do you see that? So that's why negative 1 is the number that makes it into there. Okay. So once you've got this, right, and of course we've found there's no remainder, there shouldn't be a remainder because I just showed it was a factor, right? What you can do with this is you can say, all right, my original polynomial, therefore I can factorize like this, okay? Now, that's great, that's really wonderful, but I actually can go further now because see that quadratic that we end up with at the end, right? That quadratic, I can also factorize, right? x squared plus 4x plus 3. Come on, have a think. Put your quadratic hat back on. What pair of numbers am I after just to factorize this guy? It's going to be 3 and 1, right? They add to 4 and they multiply to 3. So therefore, I can go one step further. I can say, hey, this is the factorization for the right-hand part. Like that, okay? So what I've done is I've taken something which is like, there's no, there's, well sorry, I take it back. There's a cubic formula, it takes me approximately the entire whiteboard to write it out. I'm actually not joking, go on Wikipedia, go look up the cubic formula, just like there's a quadratic formula. It's a disaster, okay? But we just solved what the cubic formula is meant to do. We factorized with a fairly simple process, okay? Now, just to finish, and this will be the last thing, and then we'll pack up, okay? I want you to look at 3D, okay? We're gonna take the same idea, uh, here's the polynomial, we'll just write this down, 2x cubed, 3x squared, minus 18x plus 8, okay? What I'd like you to do is, when you look at this, they say factorize, right? And they say, here you go, good luck. They didn't tell you like they did in the previous question, here are what the factors are, or here is a factor. They give, that gives you a really big sort of like lead in, it's like as if big clue. Here, you're just like, well, you know what? You've got the factor theorem, you find the factor. Okay. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. If you're in a pair, what I want you to do is I want you to test a pair of numbers. Okay? I want someone to tell me this and the other person to tell me this. 
okay? Um, if you're not in a pair, you, you can choose either, it doesn't matter, okay? Now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find a factor. I don't know what the factors is, ah, and I don't have a nice, neat way of finding them just off the basis of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, look, if I can find, if I can test, this is not that complicated, a calculator can do this for me quite quickly. If I can find one where I get zero, I've got a factor. Okay, so would you do that? I'll give you, like, use your calculator, it'll be a lot faster. All I want is this number, when you put in one, tell me what I get. And when I put in two, tell me what I get. Okay, off you go, as a pair, get those two numbers. As soon as someone has P of one, can they tell me? First person. Then you five. Someone got P of two? Zero. Okay, now, what have we done here, okay? I'm trying to find a factor. The first place I'm going to go is 1. It's the smallest number, and frequently, as you have noticed, you'll end up with a factor. That's not because of that's the way cubics are. It's because math teachers have designed these questions so that it's not so difficult for you, okay? But you'll notice when I tested out 1 in this case, uh, didn't work out for me, right? What does this mean? If I divide by x minus 1, I'm going to get a remainder. That's kind of not what I want, right? Ah, but the next number I try, and it didn't take us long, right? Again, the calculator. The next number I try gives me zero. There's no remainder if I divide by what? X minus two. X minus two. Very good. So I'm going to do this, right? I'm going to do my division, right? X minus two, that's the number I'm going to write down. Here are my coefficients. Two, three, minus 18. Eight. Okay. First step, write down the leading coefficient. And then, are you ready? Can we multiply and add? Yes. Multiply, add, multiply, uh, uh, yeah, add, yep, yeah, you okay with that? Last one, um, multiply, add. There's that remainder zero that you were expecting as soon as you did this, right? Now what does that mean? That means I can write p of x in a newly factorized form. I've taken out this factor, and the other factor I get from this is... 2x squared plus 7x take away 4. Okay, now that's a bit hard, but it's doable, right? I want a pair of numbers that multiplies to negative 8 and adds to 7. Let me say it again. Multiplies to negative 8, adds to 7. Can anyone tell me what the pair of numbers is? It looks to me like 8 and negative 1, right? Because you add 8 and negative 1, you'll get 7. You multiply 8 and negative 1, you'll get negative 8. So what do we just say? 8 and negative 1. So I'll go plus 8x minus negative 1x minus 4. Do you remember me breaking apart that middle term in order to factorize? Now I can do this. Okay, what is this thing going to look like? I can say, what can I take out of 2x squared plus 8x? What can I take out of that? 2 and an x as well. 2x, what do I get left with when I take that out? X plus, X plus X plus four, because I've taken out a two as well, right? And then here, what should I take out to make it match? Surely I should take out a minus one, right? That'll change both of these negatives into positive. Let's just quickly finish this and then you can go, okay? So now that I've paired things up, I've got X minus two hanging out the front. I've got a common factor of X plus four for both of these. And what do I get left with? 2x minus 1, nailed it, the whole thing is factorized.